Okay, moving on to question number 5. Carboxylic acids react with alcohols to form esters. The reaction is reversible. The equation for the reaction between ethanoic acid and ethanol is shown. And then this forms this ester plus water. What is the name of the ester formed in this equation, in this reaction? Alright, so to, um, whenever naming esters, we need to have um, this um, thing in our mind that it always starts with the name of the alcohol which in this case is ethanol and then it ends with the acid so we're going to be having the ester as ethyl ethanoid let's suppose this one was methanol and this was ethanoic acid so we would have had the ester as methyl ethanoid all right that so that is how we form the names of esters All right. Draw the structure of the ester formed. Show all of the atoms and the all of the bonds. Now, um, naming the esters and drawing the esters have opposite formulas. In uh, while naming them, we start with the name of the alcohol and then we write the name of the um, acid. However, while uh, drawing them, we draw the alcohol uh, acid first and then we draw the alcohol structure, or at least the part where um, where it comes from. So, first off, we need to know, uh, what we need to know is that the OH group from alcohols is removed and only this last H from um, acids is removed. So, we have the methyl group as CH3 over here and then in this acid we have another carbon atom with a double bond between itself and an oxygen atom and then we have another oxygen atom. Now, this, uh, since this H is removed, we're going to be bonding this group with the next, um, this alcohol group. So, we have CH3, but that is going to be at the end. So, we'll have CH2 over here. And then we have a CH3. And this is how we have our ester, ethylethanoate. The reaction between ethanoic acid and ethanol is exothermic. Draw an energy level, di energy level diagram for this reaction. On your diagram, label the reactants and the products. The energy change of the reaction that in delta H. All right. So we have our reactants as CH3, CWOH plus CH3, CH2 and OH and then this energy level is going to drop down since energy is going to be given out so the products are going to be having an energy level much lower than the reactants and here is our ester along with water as our byproduct and that's it with delta H being negative. Concentrated sulfuric acid is a catalyst for this reaction what is meant by the term catalyst. So this is a substance So this, uh, um, this definition is already a given of any catalyst. All right, D, the rate of a reaction, the rate of reaction can be increased by increasing the temperature. Explain why increasing the temperature increases the rate of a reaction. So we have a few questions in our papers where all of the answers are going to be the same. And this is one of the questions whenever we have to explain 
why increasing the temperature increases the rate of a reaction. So first off, of course, um, molecules gain kinetic energy and then they move faster. This means their collision rate increases. Which in turn, which in turn means that a higher uh, number of collisions become successful. Or in terms of Mark schemes, we're supposed to be writing it as more particles have sufficient energy to react. Okay, E. The reaction between ethanoic acid and ethanol reaches equilibrium. The reaction between ethanoic acid and ethanol is exothermic. State and explain the effect in, if any, of increasing the temperature on the amount of uh, uh, ester at equilibrium. All right. So if we increase the rate of, uh, if we increase the temperature, this would mean that the since the former uh, forward reaction is exothermic this means it gives out energy and so it is favored by low te temperatures and increasing the temperature would increase the backward reaction so our product would be decreased the amount of a product would be less so increasing the amount of temperature means amount of ester would decrease And the reason for this is that the backward reaction is exothermic, so equilibrium shifts to right. All right. We have to uh, f uh, mentioning this um, phrase equilibrium shifts to right is quite important over here as in the question the it asks state and explain the effect of increasing the temperature and the amount of extra at equilibrium we have the word equilibrium over here and it is always prudent to just uh, mention the uh, shifting of equilibrium if it does occur in uh, energy changes reaction questions. Part 2. State and explain the effect, if any, of removing water from the mixture on the amount of ester at equilibrium. So water is present on the product side. And if we remove the water, um, it would mean that the equilibrium would become unstable. And so the um, reaction uh, speeds would change to then um, make the amount equal uh, the amount just uh, the amount of products just as it was before removing water so this means the forward reaction is going to be increasing Alright, moving on to question number 6a, the two hydrocarbons have structures shown 
one why are the two two compounds called hydrocarbons because they have they are compounds of carbons and hydrogen only b two hydrogen hydrocarbon b reacts in the same way as a typical alkane describe a chemical test to tell the difference between hydrogen hydrocarbon a and hydrocarbon b state the name of the reagent you used and result the uh, in the result you obtained with hydrogen hydrocarbon a and hydrocarbon b all right so as we can see over here hydrocarbon a has double bonds however hydrocarbon b does not even though the number of um carbon and hydrogen atoms are same but since there is a double bond in a which uh, this means that some of their reactions would be different so we're going to be using a um, solution of bromine or bromine water to differentiate between them and since hydrocarbon a has a double bond this can react with bromine water open up opening up these bonds and when that does happen bromine water after reacting with hydrocarbon a will lose its color so bromine water becomes colorless and with b no reaction occurs since there is no double bond to be opened so no change occurs right b alkenes react with steam to form alcohols compound c is an alcohol draw the structure of the alkene which could be reacted with steam to make compound c show all of the atoms and all of the bonds right so this um, alcohol has four carbon with carbon atoms which means this is butanol and the alkene from which it has formed is supposed to be butene yeah that's right so we need to form we need to draw out butene and the way that we're supposed to do is that we need to have uh, the double bond either on the right hand side or on the left hand side either of these because uh, as we can see over here in the question the alcohol group is um in the pos is in the position of the first carbon atom so that is why we need to have our double bond at the end all right i'm drawing these out we have our double bond over here and the rest are carbon atoms here we have our butene all right c alkenes can form polymers what type of polymerization occurs when alkenes form polymers and that is addition polymerization since there is only one monomer that is repeated part of the structure of a polymer is shown draw the structure of the alkene from which this polymer can be made show all of the atoms and the bonds all right so we need at least two carbon uh, backbone atoms in our monomers to have double bonds which means we have this unit as our monomer since we can see in our result that we have the same monomer being repeated so we have uh, this is our let's have our monomer separated so we can draw this out all right this is the monomer and it is going to be having a double bond and we're supposed to be showing all of the bonds okay so first off we have the two carbon atoms with the double bonds and then we have another carbon atom on both of their sides with one having a methyl group one being a methyl group and then we have um, hydrogen on the backbone carbon atoms and three hydrogens with the rest of the carbon atoms 
polymers can undergo incomplete combustion to form carbon monoxide complete the equation the chemical equation for the incomplete combustion of polyethene the only carbon containing product is carbon monoxide all right so as you can see over here we are not supposed to be doing anything on this um, polyethene uh, which means the number over here is decided which is uh, we can see over here we have two carbon atoms and uh, n the that is the number of polymers is not defined so we'll take it as 2n so we have a total number of 2n carbon atoms and we know in the product we have carbon monoxide and since over here we have 2n carbon atoms we're going to be having 2n carbon atoms over here as well now this means um, that over here we also have 2n oxygen atoms and over here we have uh, two another n oxygen atoms that is a total of four oxygen atoms now we need to balance it on this side since we already have two over here we only need to add another two n so we have a total of 4n over here as well, oxygen atoms and here as well. So our equation is balanced. All right, part D, part of the structure of a polyamide is shown. This polyamide is formed from identical monomers. Complete the diagram to show the structure of one monomer. Show all of the atoms and all of the bonds. All right, so as we can see over here, we have our amide linkage, that, which means the monomer should have an amine group and a carboxylic group on each side. So here we have our amine group with a single nitrogen atom along with two hydrogen atoms. And then we have our acid group with a double bond between oxygen and carbon. And then we have hydrogen atom along with another oxygen atom. All right, so we are done with this paper.